Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Fermentation Industry Ethanol. Before going into the details of today's lecture of uh, ethanol production by uh, fermentation processes, what we are going to do? We are going to have a recapitulation of what we have discussed in the previous lecture on fermentation. Fermentation actually utilizes microbiology to produce chemical compounds. In this part of process utilizing microbiology, uh, different reactions may take place, right? Uh, like uh, conventional oxidation, uh, reduction, hydrolysis, esterification, etc. Those kind of reactions may also take place. In general, what happen in the production of a simple uh, elements, chemical compounds like ethanol, butanol, etc., then such kind of easy reactions may be there. But sometimes in uh, what happens in uh, production of uh, complicated uh, or complex molecules like you know antibiotics, other medicines, etc., then what happens you know uh, the reaction mechanism could be very complicated. So, this fermentation process itself has been considered as a kind of a uh, chemical process because reaction mechanism that uh, involved in the en uh, entire fermentation process is very complex, right? So, basically in the fermentation what we have? We have a uh, uh, micro vegetative microorganisms like yeast, bacteria, molds, etc. we are having. These will act on substrates, right? So, uh, then what happens? They will grow in number, this yeast, etc and then produce some chemicals that is what it happens okay so now in this fermentation process uh, you know depending on the uh, environment if it is done in the presence of uh, oxygen then such processes we call aerobic process if they are occurring in the absence of uh, oxygen then such process uh, we call anaerobic uh, fermentation processes right now in general what are the uh, critical factors that affects the fermentation those things also we have seen there what we have seen something like ph temperature then uh, agitation aeration uh, yield and then uniformity of products, etc. These kind of things are you know very essential uh, parameters that is what we uh, seen. Actually all these details you know we have seen for a generalized kind of uh, fermentation process, right? For any uh, generalized uh, fermentation process uh, if you see major engineering problems. then what you can realize that most of these parameters or most of the problems associated with fermentation processes are very common for most of the fermentation uh, industries, not only specific to one or, one or two process, but mostly common to most of the fermentation processes. That is the reason a kind of generalized engineering problems also we have discussed in the previous lecture. They include something like you know, obviously whenever there is a reaction kinetics are important. Then, uh, scale up issues would also be there. So, which factor should be taken for the scale up etc. In the kinetics you know uh, metabolism rates we have taken and then uh, rate of production those things we have discussed. In the scale of uh, issues you know what should we take as a scaling up issues we have taken like you know if you take a, a constant uh, tank H by D ratio then what will happen? So, then we have taken the uh, volumetric flow rate of air supplied per uh, volume of the liquid, uh, then uh, we have taken the total volume of the uh, tank, then we have taken the uh, escape velocity etc. And then when you consider all these parameters what we have seen that if you maintain constant H by D what will happen? You know foaming may be severe and you may not able to control. So, that kind of problems may be there. 
right. So, then other issue then other way if you take like let us say if you take the constant exit velocity and then try to fix this h by d then you can have uh, then if you have you know uh, then you know large diameter tanks with uh, smaller h values or smaller height values. Uh, tanks are preferable, but in such conditions mixing may, may not take place properly. So, that kind of issues may also be there. So, scaling up is a kind of a compromisation amongst the many parameters that are involved and then you have to make a compromisation at certain point definitely. So, then that compromisation is based on the uh, chemical that you are producing and then other uh, factors associated with the plant design etc. Then uh, other important engineering problems are uh, sterilization in which air sterilization is very essential, media sterilization is also uh, very essential that is we have seen not only air and media sterilization, but also sterilization of uh, uh, different parts of the plant also very essential because you know this yeast etc are very sensitive to the impurities. If there are impurities, so then you may not get the desired product and unnecessary uh, products may take place or even the growth of the micro vegetative microorganism may also not take place properly, right. Then uh, we have also seen batch versus continuous process. Though the continuous processes are uh, efficient in terms of providing the uniformity in the product yield etc., uniformity in the mixing etc., batch processes are preferred because the fermentation time that is required is very high some, sometimes in a few days also. In general at least 30 to 70 hours may be required. When the residence time or process time is so high then it is better to go for the batch process. That is the reason though continuous process have several advantages it is better to go for the fermentation process. In fact, in the fermentation plants only this uh, fermentation section is operated on uh, batch mode and rest other things purification related things are operated on a continuous basis as we are going to discuss uh, in one of the examples of uh, ethanol production anyway. Right. Then other engineering problem which is very common for most of the process industries, uh, fermentation industries is the design principles of uh, sterilization processes and labor cost also. So, these kind of engineering problems are very, very common to uh, almost all fermentation industries and then uh, when we are going to discuss about the production of ethanol and other chemicals subsequently, there also we can see some of these engineering problems are going to reappear in specific to certain kind of chemicals that are being produced, okay. Then coming to the economics of fermentation industry, rather economics, what are the prerequisites of any fermentation industry so that to make the process or fermentation process uh, economical? you know uh, one has to be careful. So, some of the parameters which are very essential from the successful fermentation operation point of view are uh, listed out here. Microorganisms must be specific to the product, what product are you going to produce and then accordingly that uh, microorganism, micro vegetative microorganism must be uh, developed okay? and it, it has to be kept under very much sterile uh, conditions. Okay. Also, they should produce good yield of desired end product. If it is a known process, then this is about known process. But if you are developing some new process or new chemical you are trying to produce by fermentation process, then you may also need to pay attention to some additional uh, aspects also. Something like you know what new strain that you are developing, that new strain of microorganism can be developed to give high specificity at rapid rates and operate in high end product concentration. These things are very essential if you are developing a new fermentation process or producing a new chemical using a fermentation process, okay. Then fermentation processes are very slow as I mentioned, uh, sometimes they take uh, days also. If you are finishing fermentation process in few hours, that is a very rapid fermentation process. If you are finishing a fermentation in 2 to 5 hours or 6 hours, that means it is a very rapid fermentation process. So, you have to make sure uh, the fermentation rates must be sufficiently rapid enough. In some processes at least 30 to 40 hours or 50 hours are required for the fermentation. Example that 
that uh, ethanol that production that we are going to discuss today that at least 30 to 70 hours required for the fermentation to complete so that to get the re desired product okay so but process either process or the microorganism you have to specifically develop such a way that the rapid fermentation should take this and then also raw materials economic raw materials are required right so because the fermentation process itself is slow process and then if the yield is also low let us say unfortunately for a given process and then raw material is also expensive then that process cannot be economically uh, feasible right so sometimes even getting this economic raw materials also uh, very difficult even if those uh, raw materials are uh, by products from other processes let us say molasses etc you get from the sugar industry while producing the sugar from the sugar industry you get the molasses but sometimes what happens such kind of you know substrates or raw materials may not be available at economic cost so one has to uh, be clear about such kind of raw material also but however nowadays petroleum hydrocarbons may be used as a uh, economic substrates to produce food for uh, human consumption and then most important thing is that the product whatever formed by the fermentation process that should be easily recoverable and then that should be purified uh, easily. So whatever the aspects of the raw materials and then process, chemical process and then purification steps which are very essential for any of the chemical industry, those are, are also true here in the fermentation industry. In fact, fermentation industry is also a natural product chemical industry. Okay? Now we discuss about the uh, production of specific chemicals. In India, ethanol or ethyl alcohol and penicillin are uh, more economic uh, if they are produced by fermentation process, right? So we start with ethyl alcohol in today's lecture. Let us start with the uh, pertinent properties of ethanol. Molecular weight is 46.07, density is 0.791 at 20 degree centigrade. Melting point is minus 112 degree centigrade, boiling point is 78.3 degree centigrade, flash point is 21 degree centigrade, whereas the ignition temperature is 372 degree centigrade. It is also explosive, lower limits of uh, uh, ethanol in explosives is 3.5 percent by volume, whereas upper limit is 19 percent by volume. If it is present in more than uh, 1000 ppm, it should be regarded as toxic. Okay. It should not be more than 1000 ppm in the environment, if at all nearby the ethanol plants also it should not be more than that in the environment. Coming to the grades, anhydrous or absolute alcohol where 100 percent ethanol is there that is one grade and then 95 percent alcohol which is also known as the industrial alcohol in general. And then uh, denatured alcohol where whatever this 95 percent uh, ethanol is there in that one you can add some mild toxic components and then use for industrial applications. So denatured uh, alcohol is in general used for the industrial applications. Ethyl alcohol primarily when it was uh, investigated it was uh, found to be very much useful if it is blended with the petroleum uh, products like gasoline etc. so that to use in transportation vehicles etc. That was primarily the major important role of ethanol uh, you know compared to the other uh, applications. But however uh, petroleum petrochemical refineries have taken a boost after 1940s or something like that then you know use of ethyl alcohol as blend in petroleum products is almost disappeared, virtually disappeared. But however ethyl alcohol is having uh, n number of applications, some of them are shown here. It is used as an intermediate for a number of other chemical products such as synthetic rubber. It is also used as solvent, for polyethylene production it is used, portable spirits production it is used, for plastics production also it is used, acetaldehyde production also it is used, acetic acid production, butyl estate production, etc. So many things are there. Prime use of it in blended power fuels has virtually disappeared with increased petroleum refinery capacity. Coming to the methods of production, this 
ethanol can be produced either by the fermentation process or by the synthetic process as well or by both processes, right? Depends on the economics, one has to choose the process. Let us say under the fermentation processes, we have uh, ethanol production from sucrose sub substrate like molasses, whatever you get from the sucrose or sugar production plants, so that you can use as substrate and then uh, do the fermentation to get the ethyl alcohol. In the subsequent chapter, we are going to uh, discuss about the pulp and paper industries. There also we have something like you know waste sulphite, right, which is like you know containing lot of water along with the some waste sulphide, cellulose, etc. would also be there. So, that can also be used as a substrate to produce uh, ethanol. And then in previous chapter, we have discussed about the production of different types of alcohols and then oils etc. from the starch and then also sugars, starch derivatives etc. we have seen. So, there we have seen that you know it is also possible to produce different type of alcohols, there also ethanol can be produced using starch substrate. Okay? Coming to the petroleum processing, catalytic hydration of ethylene is one process, esterification and hydrolysis of ethylene is another process and oxidation of petroleum is another process. So, this chapter is primarily on fermentation. So, what we are going to discuss? We are going to discuss how to produce ethanol from the sucrose substrate like molasses, etc. We are also going to discuss how to produce ethanol from the corn because corn is also used to produce starch that we have seen, right? Whereas, uh, uh, production of uh, ethanol from waste sulphide substrate of uh, paper mills probably we will be discussing in the next chapter when we discuss about pulp and paper industries. So, let us start about ethyl alcohol production by fermentation. Chemical reactions, now here what we are taking? We are taking molasses as a uh, you know a substrate. So, that is actually containing sucrose, right? So, that sucrose is nothing but C12 H22O11. We have seen in the uh, sugar and starch industries, if this uh, sucrose content that whatever present in the sugar cane, if it is not properly processed, it may be hydrated and then inversion reaction may take place to give D glucose and then D fructose. Both of them are having chemical formula C6H12O6. So, there we have written separately, now we are writing 2 C6H12O6, that is the only difference. Okay? Because our primary, you know, we look at this one, because this uh, whatever the C6H12O6 is there, that would be further reacting by using the uh, Gymase enzyme catalyst to produce ethanol and then carbon dioxide. So, basically process is what? You are taking the substrate which is having this content and then we are adding water and then required uh, enzymes or micro vegetative microorganisms we are adding and then we are allowing the reaction to take place. So, that in that process this is taking place C6H12O6 and then further by this enzyme what is happening? Uh, this is being converted into the ethanol and then carbon dioxide. So, after the fermentation process of uh, 30 to 70 hours, what you have? When you mix this one with the uh, yeast, you will get ethyl alcohol and then carbon dioxide. Right? So, now here what you can see? This reaction is exothermic. So, that means the during the process of uh, fermentation, temperature may increase. So, you might be requiring cooling facilities as well because fermentation does not occur if the temperatures goes beyond 35 40 degrees centigrade in general for most of the cases okay in this case there is a possibility of side reaction also where this uh, c6h12o6 may be reacting with water to give high molecular weight alcohols and then aldehydes so now it is unavoidable, the side reaction is una unavoidable in fermentation process. So, you are not only getting this ethanol, but also you are getting carbon dioxide as one product. So, you can recover it and then also you are getting high molecular weight uh, alcohols we, which you can collect as fusel oils. Okay? 
So, there is a byproduct also along with the uh, main product here, one is the CO2, another one is the high molecular weight alcohols, right. And then uh, slopes are stillage, two terms are used that is another uh, uh, the raw material which is rich in the nutrients and then uh, some kind of uh, vitamins etc, proteins etc. So, this can be evaporated or uh, you know purified to get a material which is suitable for cattle feed. Okay, so, that can also be taken as a third product depending on the economics of the plant. Quantitative requirements, here 1 ton of 100 percent alcohol, actually producing 95.6 percent or less than 95.6 percent alcohol, you may not require much of the water and then other chemicals in general, but if you are producing 100 percent absolute alcohol or anhydrous alcohol, then uh, so many additional quantities of steam and then water, process water, etc. may be required. So, let us do the calculation for 1 ton of 100 percent alcohol with the 90 percent yield from total sugar, right. So, then what are the uh, requirements of the raw materials? Molasses having 50 to 55 percent total sugar that is C12, H22, O11, whatever is there that should be 50 to 55 percent in the molasses that you required 5.6 tons. Then sulfuric acid 60 Baume degrees 27 kgs this is nothing but approximately 93.2 percent of H2SO4. Actually uh, in the ICT course in organic chemical technology course we have discussed about this H2SO4 uh, production. It is uh, uh, as it, it is uh, very difficult to control uh, parameters during the production. So, then if you wanted to measure the concentration of the acid during the production whether it is sufficient, uh, you know, whether it is having sufficient concentration or not. So, then what you do? You measure the specific gravity. That specific gravity measurement whatever is there that is measured into the Baume degrees and then that if it is 60 degrees that means it is known as 93.2 percent uh, H2SO4 is there, okay. That is what this mean by Baume degree. If you are not gone through this uh, course, so then probably you can see such videos on sulfuric acid presented in the inorganic chemical technology course of uh, uh, NPTEL modules. Then ammonium sulphate 2.5 kgs, this is uh, required in case if you uh, have to add some kind of nutrients to the substrate or the yeast or whatever the microorganisms that you have taken. For that if it is required to provide sometimes energy food, so then some nutrients may be required. So, under such conditions these things may be required. Coal 0.7 to 1.5 tons, process water 12 tons, cooling water 50 tons electricity 35 kilowatt hour, byproducts CO2 you can get up to 0.76 tons whereas the residual cattle feed or fertilizer 0.2 to 0.6 tons. This is coming from where? This is coming from the slopes or stillage from the bottom of uh, uh, beer uh, distillation column that we are going to see. So, this if you purify then whatever things that you get that is nothing but uh, you know fertilizer or that can be used as a cattle feed. Then fusel oil which is nothing but higher molecular weight alcohols mixture that can also be taken as a byproduct. Capacity is in general 10 to 100 tons per day of ethyl alcohol. Now, uh, we see the flow chart for the ethyl alcohol production from the molasses, okay. So, here in this uh, flow chart some symbols H, C and then P are there, H stands for the preheat exchangers, C stands for the total condense or condenser, P stands for the partial condense or partial condenser uh, which is also known as the deflammator, okay. So, now here what happens the molasses that you have taken that you take to the molasses storage, then you dilute it in a continuous diluter, in a continuous diluter you dilute this molasses using the water or uh, water scrub with 1 to 2 percent alcohol that is coming from the scrubber section. 
why this dilution is required when you do the dilution of this uh, molasses, then when it interacts with the yeast in the fermentation tanks, it will help the growth of a yeast. That is the reason the dilution is required. Okay? Now, this diluted molasses whatever is there that you take to the fermentation tank along with the nutrients etc. if required. Right? Whereas, separately what you have, you have the yeast culture tank in which you take the yeast and then to this also you can add the nutrients if required. Sometimes what happens, the whatever the molasses is there that would be sterilized by molasses sterilizer and then that sterilized molasses is also added to the yeast tank. The purpose is again is to maintain uh, the uh, sterilized conditions in the yeast culture as well as the allowing the molasses will, in, will improve the growth of the yeast etc. That is the for that is also one purpose, but it should be this molasses should be sterilized one. Right? So, that yeast you take to the uh, yeast storage tank. So, if you are adding because sterilization of the media as well as the air etc. are required as a uh, common engineering problem of uh, fermentation industry that is what we have seen. So, here uh, if you are doing sterilization, so then some kind of heat may be evolving, so that heat has to be removed by the water. Right? So, that uh, yeast you can take to the yeast storage. Now, this yeast and then uh, whatever the diluted molasses along with the nutrients may be taken to the fermentation tank. Right? So, some of the diluted uh, molasses may also be taken to the molasses sterilizer. It can be directly molasses can be taken or diluted uh, molasses can be taken to the mo molasses sterilizer uh, for the sterilization purpose as per the requirement. It depends how much sterilization is required for the given process. Right? So, now here in the fermentation tank the reaction takes place for about 30 to 70 hours. So, the temperature should be maintained between 20 to 30 degree centigrade for that you know cooling is required. At the end of the reaction may be around after 60 hours or 65 hours temperature may even go up to 35 degrees centigrade also, but it should not be allowed to go beyond 35 degrees centigrade otherwise fermentation may not take place. So, when the fermentation is taking place in the reaction we have seen that uh, C6 H12 O6 is giving what C2 H5 OH ethanol and then CO2. When side reaction is occurring, so some kind of uh, you know alcohols and then aldehydes also forming that is what we have seen by the side reaction. So, other than gases all of them are in the liquid state. So, the gases are primarily CO2 that CO2 may also be containing some amount of uh, ethyl alcohol which is uh, you know volatile compared to the other uh, components that are present in the liquid. So, that CO2 has to be scrubbed before leaving out right, and then collected as a product if it is required and then if it is uh, useful from the economics point of view. right. So, when you pass the CO2 through a uh, water scrubber, so the water whatever is there that will be absorbing the alcohol and then that uh, water scrub would wa whatever is there that would be having 1 or 2 percent of ethanol that is used for uh, you know diluting the molasses. right. Whereas, the liquid that is there uh, in the fermentation tank after the completion of the fermentation that would be passed through a preheat exchanger and then uh, after passing another preheat exchanger that will be taken to the beer still because it is primarily having alcohols, aldehydes and then water only now. Right. So, now here in this beer still the concentration of the beer would be increased to 50 to 60 percent and then that would be taken to the aldehyde section. Before going to the aldehyde section that would be passed through a partial condenser. Partial condenser purpose of this partial condenser is that you know it will condense the vapors only to the little bit only or only some amount of vapors would be condensed and then whatever the condensed vapors are there they will be fed back to the a distillation column uh, still we are writing still but they are all distillation columns column or still whatever written here all of them are distillation column. So, by uh, reflexing or re uh, pro supplying back that uh, partially condensed uh, liquid to the uh, still or the distillation column the concentration of alcohol will increase will grow that is the purpose of uh, this partial condensation. 
right. So, once the concentration reaches up to 50 to 60 percent then you do the total condensation. So, then that product you take to the uh, aldehyde column here what you have primarily you have 50 to 60 percent alcohol plus aldehyde should be there, right. So, this uh, mixture would be taken to the aldehyde and then here again the same distillation process would be done, right. So, aldehydes uh, would be the uh, more volatile here. So, they will be more evaporating more or you know they would be present more in the top product. Fr that top product again passed through a partial condenser and then whatever partially condensed vapors are there they will be fed back to the column so that to improve the concentration of aldehyde and then once the uh, aldehyde concentration reaches the maximum in the aldehyde column they would be condensed in a total condenser and then collected as a aldehyde products, okay. Whereas, uh, from the side stream of the aldehyde column whatever the higher alcohols and then uh, ethanol etc are there they would be collected of course there should be there would be some water also. So, they will be collected and then uh, passed through a separator where uh, higher alcohols would be separated and then uh, ethanol water would be taken to the rectifying column section. So, here in the rectifying column section if at all uh, some traces of higher alcohols or higher molecular weight alcohols are there they will be collected from the bat from the bottom of the rectifying column and then sent to the separator where the fusel oils are separated and collected as a product, right. So, from the top what you get you primarily get uh, you know uh, 95 percent pure alcohol remaining 5 percent water would be there that you take to the storage, okay. So, in this process of uh, getting this uh, 95 percent alcohol if at all some aldehydes are also there they will be uh, collected from the top whereas, this alcohol you are collecting from the side stream, okay. From the top whatever you are getting though those would be partially condensed and then reflexed and then after the concentration becomes sufficiently higher then they will be sent to a total condenser and then that will be sent back to the aldehydes because these are primarily having aldehydes, impure aldehydes they are present in the mixture of uh, you know alcohol, higher molecular weight alcohols and water. Now, what you can see here in the all these three columns 1, 2, 3 columns all of these three columns all three things are there not only ethanol, high molecular weight alcohols and then aldehydes and then water would also be there. But the percentages point of view most of the aldehyde is removed in the second one, right. And then most of the higher molecular weights are removed uh, in the separator and then rectified sections like that, okay. Some after that only primarily ethanol and then water would be there they will be taken to the storage this will be having only 95 percent ethanol because beyond this one uh, you know you cannot separate because of a constant boiling mixture or azeotrope formation takes place when the ethanol concentration is around 95.6 percent by volume and then remaining is water by volume. When the constant boiling mixture or azeotrope forms the separation is not possible conventionally separate routes are there that we are going to do. So, that is the reason the distillation stops or the top product is collected at 95 percent alcohol. All these columns are distillation column different trays are there actually you know. So, the feeding to which tray the feed has to come to which tray the reflex has to come from which tray the side stream has to be collected all these engineering calculations or design calculations are part of you know other course like you know mass transfer operations too. Usually mass transfer operation course is divided in two parts in the second part you discuss on this distillation. So, we are not going into those parts. Now, this 95 percent ethanol whatever is there you can use three, three ways directly you can use and then uh, uh, sell it as per the government norms and then other option is that you can add some mild toxic components as denaturants and then you get denatured alcohol for industrial applications. Right? Other option is that 
see now three options are there one option two option and then this is the third option one two three option third option is that you take it to the anhydrous steel or azeotropic distillation that we are going to discuss separately where you are using makeup benzene and then try to get 100 percent ethanol separated out so this is this is also we are going to discuss separately in the subsequent uh, uh, part of the today's lecture anyway Okay. So, this is what happens in general in ethyl alcohol production from the molasses by fermentation process. Now, in this process what are the things that you have to see? Only the fermentation is uh, operating in the batch mode. After that whatever this uh, separation purification steps are there, all these steps are you know continuous operating in continuous mode. Whereas, this fermentation is alone operating in a batch mode. because resistance time is 30 to 70 hours. All right. Now, whatever we discussed in the flow chart, all that information is provided as a text here from the learning point of view. Molasses is diluted to 10 to 15 percent sugar concentration and adjusted to pH of 4, 4 to 5, pH of 4 to 5. Right. So, this can be done by the addition of H2SO4 or by addition of uh, slopes or stillage. This dilution support yeast growth which furnishes invertase and zymase catalytic enzymatic reaction that we have seen. If molasses lacking nutrients then ammonium and magnesium sulphate or phosphate are added as nutrients that depends on the requirements. This diluted mixture is called as mash and is run into large wooden or steel fermentation tanks. Yeast solution is grown by inoculating sterile mash. This yeast solution is added and fermentation ensues with evaluation of heat which is removed by cooling coils. Temperature maintained at 20 to 30 degree centigrade over 30 to 70 hours period rising to 35 degree centigrade near the end of the reaction period. CO2 may be utilized as a byproduct by water scrubbing and compressing otherwise it is vented after water scrubbing. Separation of 8 to 10 percent alcohol in the fermented liquor called beer is accomplished by a series of distillations. In the beer distillation alcohol concentration 50 to 60 percent increased and undesirable volatiles such as aldehydes are taken off the top and fed to the aldehyde still. Alcohol is pulled off as a side stream split to the rectifying column third column. In this final column azeotropic alcohol water mixture of 95 percent ethanol is taken off as a top side stream condensed and run to storage where it is split into three parts as per the requirements. First part is direct sale as portable government controlled alcohol. Second is denatured by small additions of mildly toxic ingredients and sold for the industrial applications. Third one is made anhydrous or absolute alcohol by ternary azeotrope distillation using benzene or extractive distillation using ethylene glycol. So, here actually some terminologies are there you know uh, whatever the 95 to 95.6 percent uh, alcohol is there that is known as the industrial alcohol in general. Right? Whatever 100 percent alcohol is there that is known as the anhydrous or absolute alcohol. Some different terminologies are used based on the percentages that is it. Fusel oil recovery, side streams are drawn off near bottom of aldehyde and rectifying columns and are separated by decantation. These higher molecular weight alcohols are sold directly for solvents or fractionated to give predominantly amyl alcohols. Bottoms from beer still known as slopes or also known as the stillage are processed as either of the below two options discharged as water or concentrated by evaporation to cattle feed depending on fuel and byproduct economics because it also contains nutrients, proteins, vitamins, etc. Major engineering problems, first is collection and storage of molasses. 
molassens you know collection and storage because of that one you know con its composition may be changing because on storage also it may be undergoing some natural fermentation kind of thing also if it is stored for long time it smells very badly that it is uh, it may causing you know uh, problem to the surrounding so collection and storage of molasses is a problem so that should be properly taken care right it should be collected just before the start of the run just before the start of the run in the sense within a day or two time within a day or two uh, you have to collect and then don't store for the weeks and months in the industry rather you uh, do the fermentation within one or two days after collecting it maintenance of sterile and specific yeast culture conditions any of the fermentation process it is very essential to maintain sterile uh, media substrate and then parts of the plant etc batch versus continuous operations in this process only the fermentation process is batch process whereas the purification steps all that uh, three distillation column all of them are operated under the continuous mode it will save the space equipment and operating cost as well waste disposal problem if at all if you are not using the slopes etc as a animal feed or if it is not economic to produce animal feed from the slopes then uh, the disposal is a problem right so for that what you have to do if you are not using as cattle food after concentrating then what you should do you should use trickling filters activated sludge and anaerobic digestions processes to lower the bod before discharging to water runoff fuel economy is very much essential wherever distillation is involved so in this case at least three distillation columns are there so use of preheat exchangers are uh, found to be providing fuel economy required in a, any plant development methods to produce anhydrous alcohol from 95% alcohol azeotrope so this anyway we are going to see what are the methods are available now now we try to produce the industrial alcohol from corn that is basically whatever the alcohol that production we have seen until now that is from the molasses or sugar substrate right so now we try to do the similar one from the corn because we have three options from the sugar substrate from the starch substrate etc so corn is a better source for the starch and then that process we can see as a second one third option was you know uh, using the uh, sulfite waste from the paper industry that probably we discuss in the next week when we discuss uh, about pulp and paper industry so that all three options of a fermentation processes to produce ethyl alcohol would be covered one we covered by using sugar or sucrose uh, substrate the second one starch or corn substrate we are using and then how to produce the ethanol from that starch or corn that we are going to discuss now now again uh, here again the terminology industrial alcohol is given that means it would be this process is up to producing the so called uh, 95 or 95.6 volume percent of ethanol here what you do whatever the corn is there you do the dehulling degermination and ground it then you add uh, slopes or stillage and then also you add water all of them you take to a continuous cooker to which you supply the steam and then maintain the pressure of 100 to 60 to 100 kilo pascal uh, gas pressure so then here in the continuous cooker cooking of uh, this corn would take place right it is very essential to gelatinize the mixture okay so once this it is done it is actually done for a one or two minutes or less than 5 minutes only then whatever the mixture is coming that would be at 175 degree centigrade this you pass through a flash chamber where steam is removed and then because of the steam removal when the temperature would be suddenly drop to 60 degree centigrade then what you do to this one you can add molds and then nutrients mixer and then uh, scrub water which is having 1 to 2% of alcohol etc those things you can add here so the temperature is still 60 degree centigrade so then it this mixture is has to be passed through cooling pipes cooling pipes it has to pass through cooling pipe because 
Now this line is going to the fermenter. In the fermentation section, temperature should not be more than 32 to 35 degrees centigrade. But after this mixing, the whatever the mixture is there, that is approximately 60 degrees centigrade. So when it passes through the cooling pipe, not only the temperature decreases, but also you know uh, the starch, dextrins, etc., would be produced from the corn or gelatinized corn mixture, whatever you are getting. Right? So, this you take it to the fermenter, you can take directly uh, to the fermenter or you can do some kind of sterilization if required uh, sterilizing the substrate, media sub uh, sterilization. Then separately in the yeast tub you are producing the yeast that should also be sterilized if required and then this yeast can be taken to the fermenter. So, this, this can be done either way, it can be taken directly or it can be you know mixed with the uh, culture and then uh, or it could be mixed with the uh, you know this mixture corn starch mixture and then that should be taken to a fermenter. So this yeast and then whatever the mash or the mixture after adding the malt etc all that at around 20 to 30 degree centigrade or less than that temperature or added to the fermenter either individually or mixed before and then sent to the fermenter. In the fermenter reaction takes place about 30 to 70 hours, temperature try to maintain less than 32 degree centigrade. Now here again after this process everything is same, you get the CO2 and then liquids. CO2 you scrub with water to recover if at all some uh, ethanol is being carried by the CO2 gases. So, that scrub water you recycle to the mixer, the scrub water, whereas CO2 that you get you get as a kind of product, use it as a product or release in the atmosphere after checking its concentration etc. This liquid then you send it to the beer still, then uh, aldehyde uh, section, then rectifying section etc which is similar to the previous process where you know uh, ethanol produced from molasses. So exactly the same thing, first you take to the beer uh, section where you try to increase the concentration to the 50 to 60 percent of uh, alcohol remaining or aldehydes etc. These aldehydes would be separated out in the aldehyde section and then collected as product whereas the after removing the aldehydes primarily you are having the fusel oil and then alcohol only, fusel oil that is nothing but high molecular weight alcohols and then ethanol water mixture are there that will be taken to the rectifying column where water you take it as a bottom product, right. From the top product you can take uh, you know ethyl alcohol after uh, condensation whereas from the side stream you can uh, get back uh, you know so called stream which is rich in the high molecular weight uh, alcohols, they would be again separated in a separator and then you get a fusel oil. So all these processes are similar, the purification steps are similar like previous one. Here again this H stands for the preheat exchanger, D stands for deflammator or partial condenser, C stands for the total condenser. So whatever process that is shown in the flowchart, the same is presented here uh, from the learning point of view. Either in wet or dry conditions, corn is degerminated, dehulled, and milled. This milled corn is sent to either batch or continuous cooker which operate under pressure. Time in the cooker is about 1.5 minutes and pressure maintained at 60 to 100 kilopascal gas pressure. In continuous cooking, grain is pre-cooked for 1 to 5 minutes with water and stillage or slopes which is nothing but de-alcoholized fermented beer from the beer still. Cooking is essential to gelatinize the ground grain so that barley malt amylases can convert the starch to fermentable sugars. Mash is continuously fed to a steam heater that instantaneously raises temperature to 175 degrees centigrade. Then the mash is passed through a series of pipes and discharged through a relief wall into a flash chamber. In flash chamber temperature drops to about 60 degrees centigrade. Gelatinized cooked grain mash is mixed with malted barley and water. This mixture is pumped through a pipeline 
which is also a converter for 2 mains at 60 degrees centigrade and then sent to fermenters through pipe coolers because before entering the fermenters the temperature has to be reduced from 60 to approximately 20-25 degrees centigrade. Starch is hydrolyzed to about 70 percent maltose and 30 percent dextrins in short time in the converter. Stillage with 20 to 25 percent of final mash volume from beer still is added to converted grain mash prior to fermentation. The purpose is to lower the pH and then furnish nutrients for yeast if required and then adding buffer action as well. Separately a charge of selected yeast about 5 percent of total volume has been growing meanwhile in the yeast tub on a corn barley malt mash which was previously sterilized under pressure and cooled. Mash is pumped into fermenter and yeast added as soon as 10 percent of malt has been pumped. Initial pH is adjusted to 4.8 to 5 with uh, sulfuric acid and acetylase. As fermentation reaction is exothermic, cooling may be necessary to ensure that maximum temperature does not exceed 32 to 35 degrees centigrade otherwise fermentation will cease. Time of fermentation cycle may vary from 30 to 70 hours or uh, roughly 72 hours. After the fermentation action is finished, the liquors in the fermenters are called beer and alcohol is separated by distillation. Beer containing 6.5 to 11 percent alcohol is pumped upper sections of beer still after passing several heat exchangers. As the beer passes down the column, it gradually loses its lighter boiling constituents. Liquid discharge from bottom of still through a heat exchange is known as stillage or slope. It carries proteins, residual sugars, nutrients and in some instances even vit vitamins also. So, it is frequently evaporated and used as a animal feed constituent. Overhead from a beer still containing alcohol, water and aldehydes passes through a heat exchanger to partial condenser. This condenses sufficient vapors to afford a reflux to strengthen vapors that pass through to condenser where 50 percent alcohol containing volatiles or aldehydes is condensed. This condensate is commonly known as high wines is conducted into the aldehyde column from which low boiling impurities are separated as overhead. Effluent liquor from part away down in aldehyde column flows into the rectifying column. In this third column alcohol is brought to strength and finally purified as below manner. Overhead passing through a deflammator or partial condenser is partly condensed to keep the stronger alcohol in this column and to provide reflux for upper plates. More volatile products which may still contain a trace of uh, aldehyde and of course alcohol are totally condensed and carried back to upper part of aldehyde still. Near top of column 95 to 95.6 percent industrial alcohol is taken off through condenser for storage and sale. This is all we discussed already uh, in the flow chart. So, that is uh, just it is provided in a text form for the benefit of the learners. Now, let us say if you wanted to improve that 95 or 95.6 percent of uh, ethanol to 100 percent, so then what should be done? So, there are some approaches that we are going to see and then we wind up today's lecture after that. Further down the column, higher boiling fusel oils are run off through a cooler and separated to a special still. In this still, they are rectified from any alcohols if at all present. They may carry before being sold as impure amyl alcohol for solvent purposes. Bottom of this rectifying column discharges water. Alcohol water mixtures are rectified to increase strength of alcohol component. This can be done by virtue of vapor composition being strong in more volatile constituent than liquid from which these vapors arise that you can see here in this picture. Actually this is TXY diagram for ethanol water mixture, equilibrium, equilibrium diagram that is what uh, we can call it actually. X is nothing but uh, you know volume fraction of uh, ethanol in liquid phase, Y is nothing but volume fraction of same ethanol 
in the vapor phase which are in equilibrium to each other, right. Let us say it, uh, whatever the uh, that equilibrium that whatever the y versus x information is there that changes with temperature and pressure. Let us say if you keep pressure constant and then keep changing the temperature then whatever the T x diagram and then T y diagram are there they are provided here. So, this is nothing but T x temperature versus composition of uh, that uh, ethyl alcohol in liquid phase and then this is temperature versus composition of uh, that uh, ethanol in vapor phase ok. So, you can see these two curves are forming hysteresis. The gap is more that indicates that uh, the, the mixture can be easily separable or water ethanol mixture whatever is there that can be easily separated uh, into uh, pure ethanol pure water. If the hysteresis is very thin and then gap is very less uh, then separation would be very difficult that is what uh, uh, this hysteresis uh, loop indicates ok between this T x and T y diagram. So, such things you learn in the mass transfer course where you talk about distillation and then etcetera those kind of things. However, some information is provided here. So, now these uh, let us say at this particular temperature if you draw a horizontal line that is known as the tie line and then that gives the concentration gradient that whether it is possible to do separation of ethanol or water or ethanol from the ethanol water mixture or not that is what it indicates. So, every temperature it gap is different. So, here the gap is less and then as the temperature decreasing the gap is increasing. But further as the temperature going down very much around 80 degree centigrade the gap is decreasing and there is a point where both of them are you know having the same uh, composition right. So, that that point is known as that point is known as constant boiling mixture constant boiling mixture. So, where the concentration is uh, 95.6 percent ethanol is there and remaining is water and then that is occurring at 78.15 degree centigrade or 78.3 degree centigrade. Right. So, here at this point what you understand that whatever ethanol concentration is there that is same in either uh, vapor phase or liquid phase. So, then separation is not possible. Right. So, for that purpose you know you have to do some other processes those we are going to discuss. Right. So, this point CBM constant boiling mixture or azeotropic point we call it. So, all those details are part of the mass transfer course there you can learn in detail anyway. However, uh, quickly we have seen some uh, information. So, this T versus X comma Y that plot is this one ok T X Y diagram. So, this diagram is to show that you know after certain uh, point you know separation is not possible or this T X and T Y uh, uh, curves are joining together that is what it mean by. However, alcohol cannot be made stronger than 95.6 percent by rectification because water forms binary constant boiling mixture of this composition which boils slightly lower than absolute alcohol ok. Now, absolute alcohol how to get that is what we are going to see. Industrial alcohol contains 95 to 96 percent of alcohol and 4 to 5 percent water. Actually, whatever 95.6 percent ethanol and then remaining water is the azeotropic mixture that we are calling that is such precisely calculation is possible theoretically, but experimentally 95 to 96 percent like that you can in general write because it is very difficult to control uh, such precisely at industry level. In the lab level we can control ok. Formerly this water was removed by absorption by using quick lime followed by distillation to get anhydrous absolute alcohol and it was very good approach. 100 percent ethanol was able to produce high quality uh, absolute alcohol was able to produce, but this process was very expensive that is the reason it was superseded by the other methods that we are going to discuss. Ethanol and water forms an azeotrope which is 95 volume percent of alcohol. Various methods are in use and are have been suggested for uh, removing last 5 percent of water to produce 100 percent of alcohol and then some of them are provided here in a tabular column. See the type of separation 
initial ethanol concentration, final ethanol concentration, what type of process used and then how much energy is required that is given. Quickly if you see uh, type of separation is complete separation uh, when your initial concentration is 10 and then final concentration is 100 percent. Then so many process are there conventional dwell distillation extraction with CO2 solvent extraction vacuum distillation are there and then their energy calculations are uh, slightly different from each other. Right? Likewise, azeotropic uh, distillation or azeotropic separation process is there where you get from the initial 10 percent concentration to 95 percent concentration of uh, ethanol. For this conventional distillation, vapor recompression, multi-effect vacuum distillations are possible. Here also the energies are different. But azeotrope separation where from 95 initial concentration to 100 percent final concentration of ethanol if you want to produce, the process like conventional azeotropic distillation, dehydration via adsorption using lime as drying medium and then low temperature blending with gasoline to get gasol. This was conventionally followed long back when the primary application of ethanol was to blend uh, with the petroleum products and then uh, recent development of molecular sieves etc. also used. Right? So, what we do now we discuss this conventional azeotrope distillation process. Okay? There are also some process like reverse osmosis where initial concentration may be 3 and then final concentration up to 10 percent you can get, but this is not required anyway for us. Now, oldest method is distillation of 95 percent azeotrope using a third component benzene. This method forms a minimum constant boiling mixture boiling at 64.85 degree centigrade. This temperature is lower than a water alcohol azeotrope for which temperature is 78.3 degree centigrade. Now, the thing is that benzene you are adding to disturb the azeotropic composition. Primarily that is the purpose of adding this third component. Right? But how much should it be added? That is again the question. In order to understand that one, what should be the composition of the benzene that should be initially added for that purpose, uh, how to do calculation that we are going to see. Let us say if you use benzene as third component, following phases uh, may form as shown in the figure like uh, three binary minimum constant boiling mixtures, two homogeneous uh, mixtures and then uh, one heterogeneous uh, phase and then one ternary phase. The equilibrium composition of uh, this mixture of uh, ethanol, water and benzene because initially 95 percent ethanol is there, 5 percent water is there. To this one you are adding benzene to disturb the azeotrope formation so that you can easily separate 100 percent ethanol. Maybe water going with the benzene or water also be covered or recovered uh, purely so that is also good. So, but how much benzene should be added? Let us say these things also you study in mass transfer especially in the liquid-liquid equilibrium calculations. These are very important part, but we are not going into the details of all those things. Primarily uh, this diagram talks about the equilibrium concentrations of th three components, three component mixtures. Right? So, when you add benzene to the ethanol water azeotropic mixtures, so then uh, two liquid phases may be forming, one liquid phase may be forming and then there is a ternary phase also forming. So, the ternary phase composition is F indicated by F here. So, actually when you draw this one what happens? You get an envelope like this. This is the equilibrium curve. Like T x, T y diagram previously we have seen. Now, here whatever the three component their equilibrium composition if you draw in this triangular diagram. So, then you get envelope this like this. Below which you get the two liquid phases, above which you get single liquid phases. Towards this corner you get the water rich phase, towards this corner you get the benzene rich, uh, rich phase and then towards this one you get the ethanol rich phase. Those things are uh, different and that is what these mean by three binary minimum constant boiling mixtures etc. So, now the problem is that you have to know how much C6H6 benzene should be added so that to disturb that one. So, for this there is a technique actually you know this ternary component mixture F from this point you join this line to C point where the pure ethanol is there here. Whereas, from the benzene here this benzene point is there from this benzene point 
to this equilibrium curve, whatever to this envelope or equilibrium curve is there, to that one you draw a tangent like this. That tangent, if you draw like this, you get this BE line and then that uh, CF line, two lines are there now actually. So, actually initial concentration whatever that uh, or initial benzene whatever you supposed to add, that composition should be falling on CF line but this CF line is not one point. So, which one should be the more economical that you have to find out. For that purpose this EB line uh, or BE line is uh, formed by drawing a tangent uh, to this equilibrium curve at uh, B point that is forming B. Wherever they are intersecting that point gives you the that point gives you the point of uh, uh, benzene composition. So, that point whatever is there corresponding to that point whatever the benzene composition is there that should be that much amount minimum has to be added to the ethanol water mixture to get uh, or to the disturb or to disturb the ethanol water azeotropic composition. Ternary mixture is lower boiling composition in the system boiling at 64.85 degrees centigrade point F that is shown in the picture. Starting composition of mixture must lie on straight line CF to ensure that removal of constant boiling mixture will leave anhydrous alcohol in the steel. For this purpose only this calculation is required whatever I have discussed in the previous slide. If starting mixture is made up by adding benzene to 95 percent alcohol, starting composition must also lie along the line BE or EB. Thus intersection point G represents the starting composition. If enough benzene is added to 95 percent alcohol to bring the total composition to point G, then continuous distillation gives ternary constant boiling mixture having boiling point 64.3, 64.85 degrees centigrade at the top of the column and absolute alcohol having 78.3 degrees centigrade boiling point at bottom. So, that is the purpose of finding this composition. Right. So, that if you do here, so finally now this is the distillation column. To this distillation column you are adding so called uh, you know whatever the mixture that C2H5OH water is there and to this one you are adding benzene makeup. Right. The compositions are such a way that G, G point whatever shown in the triangular diagrams so according to that one benzene is added. So, then here uh, distillation takes place from the bottom of the steel you get the 100 percent uh, C2H5 whereas the from the top you get ternary mixture uh, having all these three C6H6, H2O, C2H5 all these thing would be there and then they will be forming a constant boiling mixture azeotropic at 64.85 degrees centigrade. That is taken to a separator which is operating at 20 degree centigrade where that would be separated or decanter it is actually it is separated into two layers top layer and bottom layer. Top layer is almost like pure in benzene and then that is taken as a feedback to the column way as a, along with the makeup benzene. Whereas the uh, bottom layer whatever is there that bottom layer is you know uh, having benzene free aqueous alcohol that is taken to the section C. Here aqueous alcohol is collected from the bottom and then that aqueous alcohol is uh, by conventional uh, distillation separated into the pure water and then whatever the 95 or 96 percent of ethanol as the top product. That top product is again fed back to the this uh, you know section A as a recycle. So, here bottom pure ethanol you are getting, here pure water you are getting, right. Whereas, from the top of the uh, section C what you get? You get a composition which is having uh, ethanol, benzene and then water as per this composition. This is also azeotropic mixture. So, this should also be fed back to the separator along with the top product of the first uh, column A, okay. So, this is how you get the anhydrous or uh, dehydrated ethanol without water. Quickly if you see the points, in this process dehydration of 96 percent ethanol to absolute alcohol by azeotrope distillation with benzene occurs at 
101 kilo pascals in the flow chart column a has 95 percent alcohol fed into it and benzene is introduced ternary azotrope is taken overhead in this column and absolute alcohol is obtained as a bottoms in the column a right overhead vapors are condensed and passed to a decanter or separator b which is operating at 20 degree centigrade in which two liquid layers forms upper layer rich in benzene is returned to column A as reflex whereas the lower layer is fed to column C which produces a ternary azotrope as overhead product and benzene free aqueous alcohol as bottom product. This bottom product is fed to column D. In this column D it produces an overhead product of 95 percent alcohol which, which is again azotropic mixture and then that is sent back to column A as a uh, recycle. Bottoms products of column D are nearly pure water and this in the column D ordinary distillation is taking place. Benzene is recycled continuously in the system and it is necessary only to make up the benzene losses from the system. This withdrawing agent is used over and over again with a loss that should not exceed 0.5 percent of volume of anhydrous alcohol produce. So, this is all about the alcohol and then uh, anhydrous alcohol production process, right. Alcohol is produced by the fermentation process and then whatever the azotropic mixture that you get between water and alcohol that has been further processed uh, by you know extractive distillation to get the anhydrous or absolute alcohol having 100 percent ethanol only. References for this lecture are provided here. Thank you.